So in this tutorial, we're going to visualize now the interpretation of the full block count. So we are going to start by interpret interpreting only the white blood cell count. Then we are going to move on to interpretation of the uh, of the, the red blood cell count, and they have to move to the interpretation of the thrombocyte count. Now let's start with the interpretation of the white blood cell count. Interpretation of the white blood cell. So for the interpret, the next one is for the interpretation. Is it like we start with the interpretation of the white blood cell count? <clears throat> now for the interpretation of the white blood cell count, we need to point out the fact that what in interpretation of the white blood cell count, we need to know if it is local cytosis or it is local penia. Is it clear? Now, if it is local cytosis, there can be different local cytosis. It can be either it is the lymphocyte predominant, which is called lymphocytosis. It can be the neutrophil predominant, which is called it can be granulocytic predominant, which is called granulo granulocytosis. Is it the granulocytosis? Or it can be the monocyte monocyte predominant in the case of monocyte now for leukopenia it can be also the lympho side which are low so it's called lymphopenia it can be the case of the granulocyte that is low is it clear generally when the granulocytes are low it is just called a neutropenia and the last one when the monocytes are low it is called a monocyto Penia. Is it clear? So those are the different elements that you have to put in mind. Is it clear? Now, generally, these are the points that you should put in mind in order for you to generally have a, um, a good investigation. So now, when you have leukocytosis, when you have leukocytosis with lymphocytic, um, with a lymphocytosis, generally when you have lymphocytosis, you think of viral infection or you think of chronic, when you have lymphocytosis, you think of viral infection viral infection you think of chronic infection with tuberculosis is it clear generally that should be with lymphocytosis is it clear now granulocytosis generally should with an acute bacterial infection so if you have a lymphocyte granulocytic predominance it's generally an acute bacterial infection acute bacterial infection are you understanding? Generally, in this case, you are going to have an acute bacterial infection. Now, the next one is monocyte. Is it clear? Monocytosis is going to be elevated in a case where you have an infectious monocytosis. If you have an infectious monocytosis, you are going to have a high level of monocyte. But now, let me just tell you another element. Now, you can have what is called malaria is it clear with a high level of monocytes but we need to know that malaria does not have a local cytosis is it clear like malaria do not have a local cytosis no the local malaria do not have a local cytosis but it instead has a leukopenia is it clear a leukopenia is it clear so generally malaria does not have a local cytosis it instead have a leukopenia and when there is that leukopenia the major one that is involved to show that malaria is going to be the imid is it clear? there may be normal white blood cell count or there is leukopenia in case of malaria and also in the cases of typhoid fever is it clear? when you're involved with malaria or typhoid fever in typhoid fever you're going to have a um, you are, you are generally going to have um, instead the lymphocytes that are going to be elevated you may have a lymph leukopenia but the lymphocytes are the ones that are going to be elevated and in the case of malaria you are going to have a leukopenia but it's instead the monocytes that are going to be elevated i hope that you understand what i'm saying if you want to simply diagnose malaria on your full blood count malaria do not have a local cytosis it either have a normal uh, white blood cell count or it has a leukopenia similar to 
typhoid fever. Typhoid fever do not have a lymphocytosis. It may have a normal white blood cell count or a, um, a, a, a leukopenia. Now, you need to know that in malaria, though you have a normal leukocyte count or leukopenia, the monocyte count, that is the MID, are going to be elevated in malaria. Is it clear? They are the ones that are going to be elevated in malaria. But in the case of typhoid fever, it is the, uh, the, the lymphocytes or the lymph. Is it clear? The lymphocytes like this that are going to be elevated in the case of low, uh, in the case of typhoid fever. Though you don't have um, though you don't have um, a leukocytosis, you may you have may have a leukopenia. I hope you understand what you are saying or what I'm saying. So those are the points that you have when you want to diagnose different infections with white blood cell count. Now, if you have leukocytosis, extreme leukocytosis, that is already more than 100,000 cells with a lymphocytic predominance or a, lympho a lymphocytic pseudo predominance, you can think of either, you can think also of malignancies. Is it like malignancies? Is it like particular if there is excessive lymphocytosis? You think of malignant and the malignant you think of, you think of lymphoma or you also think of leukemia. Those are the two major malignancies <coughs> you have to think of. <coughs> You have to think of when you have a leukocy extreme leukocytosis with lymphocytic predominance. Now, in our context, Cameroon, we have also lymphocytosis in cases of other diseases. Is it clear? You can have lymphocytosis in the cases of other diseases, like in the case of sickle cell, sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia can also present with lymphocytosis. When you have sickle cell anemia, it also presents with lymphocytosis. Is it clear? So those are the different elements. Sickle cell also presents with lymphocytosis. Now, the other thing that can present with lymphocytosis, so those are the, the major elements that can present with lymphocytosis. If you have a patient, a sickle cell has lymphocytosis. So those are, and you have also new needs and premature general have lymphocytosis because of physiologic excessive proliferation in this new needs. Now, the next element now is leukopenia. In this case, when you have leukopenia, you can think of typhoid fever, but in typhoid fever, there is not going to, it's not going to be one that is going to be less than the other. Is it clear? You are going to have, in time, when you have leukopenia, leukopenia can either be lymphopenia, as I've initially said, is it clear? It can be lymphopenia. Or it can also be an agranulocytosis. Agranulocytosis is it clear? Lymphopenia can either be in, in leukopenia can either be shown with lymphopenia, meaning that the white blood, the, the, the lymphocyte of the white blood cell are low, or the lymphocyte of the white blood cell are high. Is it clear? It can be shown when you have a leukopenia, generally we have a neutral. Neutropenia, you have low white blood cell, low um, um, erythrocyte. Is it clear? You have low um, this one, low low neutrophils. Is it clear? Generally in, in leukopenia, or you can have either a monocytopenia, monocytopenia, or you have a monocytosis. Is it clear? Monocytosis. Is it clear? That's a reactive monocytosis. Immediately, you have a neutropenia, which is the major marker of the leukopenia. You have a lymphopenia or you have an agranulocytosis. Is it clear? A reactive agranulocytosis. You have also a reactive monocytosis. Now, in cases where you have leukopenia with agranulocytosis, you can think of typhoid fever, as I've initially said. When you have leukopenia, but the lymphocytes are high, it is typhoid fever you think of. Now, if you have a leukopenia, but the monocytes are high, you think of malaria. Is it clear? Those are the different elements. That is how you have to think. Now, if you have a leukopenia with a low lymphocyte count, you think of HIV because HIV reduces the white blood cell count. Is it clear? If you have a lymph leukopenia with lymphocytes, you can also think of other chronic and virulent viral diseases like measles. Is it clear? So those are the different elements that you have to think of. Now, neutropenia generally occur in cases that have where you have a virulent bacterial infection. 
basically you are going to have virulent bacterial infection when you have virulent bacterial infection that is going to overcome the immune system of the body it causes a neutropenia and monocytopenia occur in particular infections associating that is going to destroy the monocyte and generally when you have the leukopenia um, affecting all of the the different part it is usually as a result of the immunosuppression therapy when you are taking immunosuppression therapy or any drug that affect the bone marrow it is going to affect all the because the leukopenia with all the the, the, the different the different um, um cell 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 systems is equal it's going to cause lymphopenia neutropenia and monocytopenia so those are the different elements that you have to evaluate when you are involved with white blood cell count interpretation. Now the next is a red blood cell count interpretation.